Hi, my name is Elise Wolves, and I am so excited to be here at the Flern Studio where I will be teaching you about how to composite mobile images. I primarily shoot with my iPhone, so today I'm going to show you how I use those iPhone photos in conjunction with some other stock imagery that I use. So I'm going to add some clouds, some stars, and a moon, all with just my phone. So let's get into it. Or as Aaron would say, let's jump into Photoshop. But we're not going into Photoshop this time. We're going to Art Studio. Let's go. I primarily share most of my work to Instagram and my preference for my image sizing is four by five aspect ratio. And I like that because it fills up most of the screen and catches the user's eye. Now I'm gonna upload an image that I shot with my iPhone as a new layer so that I can eventually do a composite with it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do file, import as a layer, make sure you import as a layer and not importing as a new photo because then you'll replace um, that document size. And I've got my handy dandy album and I'm gonna go ahead and upload that image. And you'll notice that around that image will be a lot of white, but we're gonna go ahead and do edit, transform layer, move and scale. And move that image in the correct place. So now that I've got my base layer there, I want to add my new layer, which is the clouds and the stars. And I'm gonna add that layer by importing a new photo from my photo album. So I'm gonna go into my menu and I'm going to do file, import, insert as a layer, import from photos, and go to the cloud image. Now I'm going to edit, transform, move and scale, and I'm gonna to wanna to Kind of match it to the background a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and apply. Now I've got the layers and I'm going to add a new mask and I'm going to hit the gradients down here. Make sure you have color one to color two so that I can see how I will be able to blend that new layer into the background. So it looks pretty decent so far, but what you'll notice is that the blue doesn't match quite with the white of the original image. So now I'm gonna add a new layer and this new layer is gonna be filled with a blue I pulled from the sky and that's gonna make it match a lot better with the cloud background. Now I'm gonna pull the eyedropper tool and grab a blue from that cloud layer, add a new layer, and then I'm gonna go ahead and fill. And then I'm going to go into the layers and the blending modes. You can kind of play with multiply. You can play with screen. And you can kind of see the sample of what it's doing if you'd like through uh, hitting show here. So you kind of see what it's doing. So I'm going to go ahead and be okay with screen. And what I'll also do is play a little bit more with that layers panel there now since I know it's matching a little bit better. So just making sure that I'm in my correct gradient settings and I'm just gonna go ahead and play with that a little more. So now that I've got my layers matching a lot better, I want to duplicate that cloud layer so that it looks like there's a cloud in front of the city and a cloud behind it. So now I'm gonna duplicate those layers and I'm gonna go ahead and tap that first mask, make sure I'm on my gradient and I'm just gonna go ahead and mask in the front there. And this is gonna pull those clouds all together and then we've got our background image. And we'll just pull that down again, make it blend a little more. Well, this looks absolutely great, but there's one thing I would like to fix, and it's this one little star that's popping up right there. And what we can do is use the heal tool to get rid of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the heal tool. Make sure the size is looking good. Also make sure that I'm on the correct layer and not on top of a mask. Go ahead and zoom in on that part. Simply hold down on a part that you want it replaced by and go ahead and draw over it. And now it's gone.
Really happy with my surreal skyline. We've got the clouds, we've got the stars, but we just need to add the moon. So let's add the moon. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add my moon layer and I'm gonna go and do file, import, insert as a layer and import from photos. And I'm gonna add my moon layer. And so what you'll notice is on this moon image is there's a black background, but we don't want that black background. So we're gonna go into the layers panel. And what we're gonna do is use a blending mode called screen. And what screen does is it gets rid of all the black in a photo and it will only show the white. So we're gonna do screen. You'll see that when I show it, it only shows the white of the moon. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do another edit, transform, move scale, rotate. And I'm gonna go ahead and move that moon to the top. And you'll also notice that there's a little bit of stars back there. So what you'll wanna do is create a new layer, pull the color from the background, turn the pencil a little larger, make sure you're on that background, and just color behind it. Now you've got your moon. Beautiful. I added the moon layer, but what I like to do with the moon layers is I actually like to add a little gradient to it because I think it just looks a little bit more smooth and not so rounded out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a mask over the moon layer. Okay, so let's click on our layers panel and we're gonna go ahead and add a mask. And you're gonna go back to your gradient. Make sure that it's set up correct. And zoom into the moon. Just give it a little gradient. And I'm really happy with that. I've got my final image, so now I'm gonna export it and move it into another app called Visco where I'm gonna do the filtering. So now I'm gonna open up Visco or VSCO and I'm gonna hit the plus sign at the top right. And this is where I'm going to add the image that we just edited. Go ahead and double tap that hit on the bottom where we've got the lines with the little circles. That's where we're gonna add the filter. We've also got on the bottom here some different types of tools to use, um, but right now we're just gonna go and find a good filter. So um, different edits work uh, better or worse for different filters. So I'd say just try out and see what works best for the image that you're using. Um, but for now, I really like the A7 or A8 filter, so I'm going to go ahead and finalize that just by hitting save. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the dots at the top, save to camera roll, and from here you'll be able to even see the uh, size of your image. So I like to do the actual size and keep it as large as possible. There's a lot more that I could have done in Visco, but I like to use the Lightroom app as a finalize for most of my art and images just because I think it handles the image a little better. So what I'm gonna do is open up this filtered image in the Lightroom app. I'm gonna open up Lightroom CC. And I'm gonna go to the bottom, add a photo. And upload that image with the filter we just did. And now I'm going to want to play around with the light a little bit. So maybe let's bring down the highlights. And let's also play with the shadows a little bit, bring them down a bit. And we can also go into the color panel, which is where we can make it a little more blue. I might make it a little more blue, but I also can change the mixer, mixer of the blue. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little more teal-like. And what I'll also do is go into the Effects tab and add a little bit of grain. And the reason why I add grain every now and then to my photos is because I use so many different layers of images that when I have my final image, I really like to add a grain so that it brings all those separate layers together. Also, sometimes what I like to do is go to the geometry here do constrain, constrain crop and do a little upright to see if the buildings are a little off. It doesn't seem like they are, so we should be good. 
I've got my image finalized and I feel like it's got a good grain, it's got good light, it's got good color. So I would go ahead and export this and upload it to Instagram. So I've got the image and what you wanna do is go to the top right up there. It's got a little square with the arrow going up and you wanna do save to camera roll. You wanna do maximum available. There's also a few other options in here where you can save the files, you can open in a different app. Um, you can export the original, so whatever you feel fit. And that's all there is to it. And so we used the Art Studio app to composite and mask, and then we brought it into Visco where we did the filtering, and last but not least, we brought it into Lightroom where we did the grain and hue changes. And just to let you know, all of these apps have free versions, so make sure you grab them yourself. Thanks so much, everybody. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at Swopes. And please make sure you check out my Flurn exclusive pro tutorial at flurn.com. Like and subscribe and comment. Let us know all the awesome things that you loved about this. Exclusive Pro Tutorials, Pro tutorials on flurn.com. Flurn <laughs> Come to like the video and subscribe. To like it. it. They, like, they gotta like it and subscribe. Should I say that within it? <laughs> 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 <laughs>